Welcome back. So in the last lecture, I introduced the discrete Fourier transform, which is a matrix transform that takes you from a vector of data uh, sampled at regular intervals in space or time to a vector of Fourier coefficients, of complex Fourier coefficients um, for that data. Okay, so this is the discrete analog of the Fourier series, which would approximate this, this function using uh, sines and cosines of higher and higher frequency. The discrete Fourier transform approximates this data using uh, sines and cosines with discrete frequencies that are increasing uh, from, from, from zero to n minus one, okay? So we derived this discrete Fourier transform matrix um, in terms of this fundamental frequency omega n, where uh, omega n was e to the minus two pi i over n. Okay, that's kind of the, the fundamental frequency that you can get on this interval with n data points. Okay, and now what I'm gonna show you is how to compute this DFT matrix uh, in MATLAB and in Python. So just huge caution you almost never actually want to compute the discrete Fourier transform matrix. You always compute the discrete Fourier transform using the fast Fourier transform algorithm, pretty much always. I'm just showing you this because it looks cool and because I wanted to show you how you would actually build this if for some reason you wanted to, okay? Now some things to point out. This discrete Fourier transform matrix has some really important properties. This is what's known as a Vandermond matrix. It is also uh, a unitary matrix. So just like in the singular value decomposition, we saw that unitary matrices were really important. This is kind of the original uh, really important unitary matrix is the discrete Fourier transform. And unitary again means that if you have two high dimensional vectors that have a given inner product in, in real space, when I map them through into this discrete Fourier transform coordinate system, I still have the same uh, inner product. Okay, so it preserves angles and distances uh, through this map. Very important property. That's what allows us to approximate data using these Fourier transforms uh, efficiently. Okay, so we're gonna see a lot more about this later. But here, I'm just gonna show you how to code this up in MATLAB and in Python. It's really simple. Um, in pink here, you can see this is kind of the, the slow, um, kind of easy way to compute it would be with two for loops. You just go through i and through j to compute these, these coefficients, just like I've done here in terms of this fundamental frequency w or omega. This is a better way of computing uh, this more efficiently or, or faster, where you basically create a grid, um, an n by n array of i, j locations, and then you compute omega to all of those um, indexes all at once using this dot to the power of uh, i minus one times j minus one, okay? So what this is is i and j are both big arrays of every i and j index over this whole array. And you can simultaneously take w to all of those powers at once in this vectorized operation in MATLAB. So um, vectorized operations are always much, much faster. So this is kind of the easy human readable code. This is how you would actually compute it uh, fast in MATLAB. And now I'm gonna show you just the real part of this DFT matrix. So remember this is a complex valued matrix because these Fourier coefficients have a magnitude and a phase. They, they don't just tell you how much of that sine or cosine, it tells you what's the phase. Um, so of course, you know, I have maybe my fundamental frequency. The magnitude tells you how big to scale it, but the phase tells you if it should be shifted to one side uh, or to the other. So the phase and the magnitude are both important and they're both captured by uh, this complex Fourier coefficient. And so I'm just gonna plot you the real part of this, this DFT matrix. Okay, good, that's right here. And so I'm gonna make this much bigger. So this is what my discrete Fourier transform matrix looks like, okay? You can see uh, kind of there's a lot of interesting patterns here. There's bands of like, you know, positive, negative, positive, negative, or like big, small. A lot of really interesting structure in this 1024 by 1024 matrix. One of the things I think is kind of fun is that if you change the size of this when you're looking at it on a computer screen, um, when you're looking at this on a computer screen, then, um, then you'll get some interesting aliasing effects. So 
So here, I'm just going to slowly vary the size of this thing, and you're going to see, notice that the cells, it almost looks like there are cells forming. And as I change the size of this thing, you can see kind of this interesting aliasing pattern. Let me see if I can get a really good one. Yeah, OK, it's about to happen. Yeah, so you can see all these really interesting patterns. Now it looks like there's three cells in the vertical direction. Um, here, I can probably make it more or less. Anyway, this is essentially because there's only so many pixels on the screen. Uh, and this is exactly 1024 by 1024 matrix. And so, uh, yeah, if you make it smaller, it's actually really cool. So essentially, if I try to represent this 1024 by 1024 matrix on a smaller number of pixels, then there's some aliasing. And this just points to the fact that there is so much symmetry and structure in this Fourier transform matrix because, you know, each row is very similar to the previous row. It's kind of off by a factor of omega. And there's all of this, this structure in this matrix, and you can kind of see lots of, of interesting structure here, okay? Now, this is really easy uh, to compute in Python as well. Um, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same. You create a mesh grid. You can pre compute a power. And here, again, we're, we're plotting the real part of, of this discrete Fourier transform matrix. Okay. Um, now, I'll just point out that in real life, you're almost never going to actually compute this DFT matrix. That's not how you're actually going to Fourier transform data. You're going to use the fast Fourier transform algorithm. I just thought it was cool to show you kind of what this matrix looks like. OK, so in the next uh, few lectures, we're going to walk through how to compute the fast Fourier transform, where it comes from, why it's useful, and how you can use it uh, to compute the Fourier transform of data vectors even if they're very, very large, like, like high-resolution images or audio signals, things like that. Okay, thank you.